Don Bailey with Rapid Prototype Company, and I'm here with Ralph Weil, who Ralph is our uh, marketing manager and senior engineer. He's out there to help all of you customers and new customers. And uh, Ralph, why don't you tell us a little bit about the history of Rapid Prototype? Could you do that for us? Absolutely. Back in 1995, Don decided that it was time to get involved in Rapid Prototyping, and we actually bought the number 16 SLA, excuse me, SLS machine in the world. How about that, eh? Early adapters to the technology. We got into the SLS because we felt it was the first functional rapid prototyping that had become available in the industry. So, went that direction worked very well for us. And, and I was just going to say, I was going to add, Ralph, that that the the amount of business that we've done over the twenty years or so that we've been in this uh, rapid prototyping business, which is now known more as three D printing, uh, you, you'll notice that. Uh, that seems to be the, the new buzzword rather than rapid prototyping. Everybody talks about 3D printing. And of course, it's, that's gotten down to the, to the uh, hobbyist uh, you know, size with the 6x6, which is nothing like what we do today. This is completely different uh, than that technology. Maybe you might talk about the resolution and uh, the kind of materials that we have available and the type of product. One of the uh, differences with our equipment, this is an actual production type equipment. These are large platform machines, um, roughly about 20 inches cubed uh, in size. We have about 55 gallons of a liquid photopolymer resin in these machines. Uh, this particular material cures in the presence of UV light. So we do Wait a minute, 55 gallons? 55 gallons, this is what we call large platform. How much a gallon? Boy, we're talking about a hundred dollars a gallon on this stuff. A gallon or a pound? Oh, excuse me, a pound. Yeah, a hundred dollars a pound. Oh, excuse me. So I don't know how many pounds are in there, but there's a lot of material in there. It's probably, what would you guess? Oh, you've got, uh, what, you know, five over 500 pounds of material, 55 gallons, you know? No, oh, conservative more than that. It's about yeah. eight, eight pounds a gallon for water. And, and we have to have a spare vat, right? We have to back up. We have different materials. Yes, for, so each, we have, for each material, we have a separate 55 gallon vat. So we run a, a ceramic filled material, which is extremely hard and rigid. We have a clear resin for those applications where clarity is uh, advantageous. And then we have a couple of opaque white materials that are uh, quite robust, actually, to have a little bit of flex flexibility in a thin cross section. Yeah, you know, one of the things I wanted to add is uh, what Ralph and his team is really good at doing, and that's making sure that the customer. Uh, has the right application and the right product because many times a customer will come in and say this is the material that they want to use and this is the process that they want to use and Ralph and his team will come back and say well you know that's one option but maybe if you do it this way this might be a, a, a better material B it might cost less and uh, uh, C we can get it to you sooner so uh, and, and then there's other options we may not want to run it and uh, run 20 parts over here we may want to take them over to our mold shop right absolutely that's one of the advantages with the SLA equipment it has such fine detail and resolution that it makes outstanding uh, patterns for, for our tooling so we'll build these models in the SLA my guys in the mold shop will pattern finish those parts sand them down smooth vapor hone these parts and then set them up to uh, to build either a fiberglass tool or a silicone tool so that we can cast our urethane parts. That's rubber for those of you that don't know what that is. Silicone is another form of rubber. So we have a mold shop back there, right, with about, uh, uh, we've been doing that for also about 20 years. And uh, we've made an enormous number of tools uh, out of silicone and out of fiberglass uh, to produce short run uh, parts, maybe 20, 50, 100. Sure, depending, depending on the size on the of the part, yeah. We could do multi-cavity tools for the uh, small part where our customers may want two or three hundred parts. Works very well. Can we, can we get a shot in here of the machine? Uh, and see this, this particular machine happens to be running right now, so you get, a, you get a shot to see the machine in action. And uh, then what I'd like to do when we're done here, Ralph, is uh, before we leave, let's talk about the other kinds of product that we offer. Got a wide range of product uh, for our customers. Pretty much anything that you're gonna need in the uh, additive manufacturing areas we can handle. Obviously we have the SLA, we have a great deal of experience with the SLS, the centered nylon uh, products, primarily glass filled or unfilled, the FDM or fused deposition modeling, where we have a number of different materials, ABS and polycarbonate that we can run in that, and some high temperature products. Um, 
object 3D printing. One of the nice things about the object is you can do have a dual durometer part. So part of your uh, section of your, your component could be firm and then another part rubber on it. So that's uh, kind of a, a nice way to get that combination type of a part. So again, with all those types of uh, materials and processes, it's Ralph's job and his team's job to make sure that, uh, that you, uh, as the customer, uh, get the right application. We don't want you to get the wrong application, even though you may think it's the right one. Sometimes, because you're not familiar with the other options, uh, we can we can interject and save you some money. A good example of that is the uh, the new epoxy-based resins for the SLA process. A lot of uh, people that have been around this industry for 15, 20 years remember SLA as being a very rigid, brittle material. These new materials are far superior to, to that old uh, technology. So you've got some very robust material properties now that can be gotten from the uh, the SLA process. Well, this probably is a good chance to take a short break here. Why don't we go out in the mold shop and let's show the folks out there what we can do back there, huh? So let's take a look. All right, so here we are back in the mold shop. Ralph, you want to take it away and show the folks exactly what we do back here, give them an idea about the kind of processing that we go through. Absolutely, Don. After we get our SLA patterns built, we bring the uh, models back to our mold makers who in turn will finish the part, sand the part, hone the part, take measurements on it that were necessary, and then start to develop the mold, generating a mold uh, um, and the parting line. Uh, we tend to, uh, to design our, our silicone tools, or in this case a hybrid fiberglass silicone tool, as it would be in production. So we're going to have the same parting line as the uh, the actual production part, which is nice. Um, one of the other things that we do is the quality of our tool exceeds what you'll normally see out in the uh, in the field. As you'll notice here, we've got the uh, the wood casing on our on our tools, and what that means to you is that we get extended tool life on sure, our parts. Sure, you know? I can see that. Can most see uh, that. most of your standard um, the silicone tools will be guaranteed for 20, 25 shots. We typically get 50 parts, and in some cases, considerably more than that. Yeah, I can um, see that. Our tool. So, so, so here's, a, here's an example of a part that uh, came out of this fiberglass mold, this hybrid, fiberglass and silicone. Yep. That gives you an idea what the part, the end part would look like and what the tool looks like to get it to this level. This and of course, from here, it's got to be trimmed and finished, right? Yeah, typically. You'll see that we put a little bit of texture on this uh, on the pattern when we built it, so as the part comes off the tool, it does have the uh, production uh, texture sure, that the customer sure. wanted. And what kind of material is this? This is a short D urethane material. That's approximately a 65 uh, durometer. We, the, one of the nice things with urethanes is we can vary that durometer or the hardness all the way down to a, a 30 short A, which is a rubber almost simulates jello at that point very very soft and then uh, you go up to a 90 um, 90 shore a which is a firm material this uh, then we move into a d shore the hard urethane so this is about a 60 65. Well, i was going to ask you that okay, okay good that's kind of a mid-range material that uh, that tends to be a very popular uh, good all-around uh, durometer what about this guy right here well for our customers that need to have uh increased number of, uh, of parts uh, in this case, the customer wanted uh, like 250 parts, uh, 300 parts. We built a 20 cavity tool. So we built 20 uh, SLA patterns, small patterns, got those built in a day, took us a day or two to finish them up, you know, and then uh, my mold makers were able to come up with the configuration ah. that they wanted. And now every time we shoot this tool, we get 20 parts come off. So these are know? little bitty guys. Yeah, little little bitty guys. So we do small buttons, you know, and we do large parts all the way up to full instrument panels. Yeah. I see we got a big tank back there too for Yeah, them. we've got uh, we've got a large uh, large pressure vessel. So we like to pressurize our silicone tools when we do it. It gives us that extra level of quality that we look for. Density, complete density, yes, removes any microscopic or small bubbles you might normally see from uh, room room casting. What do we have here? We've got a, a type of a bellows there. We do a considerable amount of uh, CV boots and uh, and boots that are going to cover up whether it's a uh, CV joint or a uh, you know any type of a flexible joint in uh, you know in Auburn. we do a lot of automobile stuff obviously and being here in Auburn Hills but uh, this one was for a uh, all-terrain vehicle. I love it. it. Went on an axle shaft. Yeah very functional 
this uh, these parts actually bridged uh, production for a customer. And what's what's the uh, material here? That's a uh, Shore A urethane, uh, high tear strength, and we were about in the uh, 65 Shore A on that particular so pretty material. Pretty flexible. Pretty flexible, yes. Very uh, very durable. Beautiful. All right. Well, anyway, thanks, Ralph. Appreciate you. Uh, taking the time to show us around and give us an idea of what we do back here in our mold shop. So, Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you again. We look forward to seeing you and thanks for watching.